All right, so this is my first time using the James Charles palette from Morphe. It is the mini palette. And so I've gone in with T first. This is T, and then I'm going on top of T with 518 for this orange shade. Making sure that I pack, spread this orange out. Make sure that I cover the full eye with this orange. Again, this is 518. This is the P. Louise White eyeshadow base. It is my first time using the P. Louise White base um, during this quarantine. I've had a lot of time to sit and read beauty blogs and be a part of some uh, very good Facebook groups and everybody was going in on the P. Louise eyeshadow eye bases and she was actually having a sale. Everything was basically 50 to 75% off and so that's exactly what I did. I called in and I got me some and this is my halo and it actually is the color hello come on Beyonce hello and halo yes and now on the outside this is playground so again these are all colors from the James Charles palette I also bought this when Ulta was having a sale and the Morphe James Charles collab was on sale. It was 50% off. Sure, why not? So, again, I'm going in Halo. Hello is in the Halo, the middle of my eye. And on the outside, I have Playground. And then I'm going to clean it up, putting more of the 518 on top. Making sure that I blend that out. Making sure that I make it look like one shadow. It still looks a little messy right now. Give me a minute. I haven't actually used a blending blending brush. It's here. Blending it so there are no creases, no harsh lines. Um, I didn't like the first color. That's why I didn't mention it now. Because I didn't like that first color. So I went back with Playground on both sides. Again, doing the other eye now. Halo again in the middle. Playground on the outside. This is my first time doing a halo eye. Um, actually, no, it's not. This is my second time doing a halo eye. The first time I did a halo eye, my halo was too wide, so it didn't really look like a halo. <laughs> kind of looked more like a, I don't know, an ocean maybe. I, I don't know. But no, it was not a halo. Um, or maybe a hat. But I think I did a little bit better this go round. Um, making sure that the halo stays in the center of my eye and so again you know the halo sits on the crown of your head and so your halo eyeshadow should be the center right in the middle of your eyes close to um this is the uma beauty t2 i really 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 am into the Uma Beauty products right now. It is a black owned company. Um, and so I've been really excited to try some of their products. They also had a sale a couple of weeks ago. So um, this is also the Woke Concealer. Brown Sugar T2 is the color for my Woke Concealer Brown Sugar T2. And I'm going to put that basically in my T-zone area. So underneath my eye, bridge of my nose, my forehead, little, I don't know what that's called right there. And this one is Black Pearl T1. I have several beauty blenders, but I found that I like this beauty blender for my concealer. It's flat. It has a flat edge to actually get underneath my eye, get real close to that edge of my nose. Go ahead and make that line real sharp going up past my eyeshadow. It just helps 
to make that part of my eye look good. Um, but I'm blending it out using my beauty blender. Very good. Actually with the blender because you can pat. You can also do circles. You can do several combinations of movements with your beauty blender. To make sure that you have your um, foundation and your concealer meet and mesh together. So it doesn't look like multiple products. It should just look like one product on your face. It should all blend in well together. Making sure that I get all of the concealer in right there to help contour those cheeks. Now I'm going in with Chalk Dust from Crayon Case. And this is in the color N. This has truly become one of my go-to everyday um, setting powders. It is very yellow. I really like my eyeshadow. I think I did really well this time. Let me know in the comments what you think of my halo. Um, this is actually a Try It Thursday look from Crayon Case. One of the Crayon Cuties. Um, put this look up. I actually make sure that I insert the look at the end of the video so we can compare my look to... The actual original look to see what it looks like. Um, I love this brush. I actually looked up on this brush. A makeup store was going out of business during the holiday season and so I was able to get the whole set um, for 75% off. And it has a little glitter at the end but I love it especially to get rid of the baking powder because it's light but firm so it really moves the powder out of the way really helps to leave what needs to be there there and remove what doesn't need to be there. Also make sure when you're removing your setting powder, you want to get all of that off. Again, although we are layering the makeup, ultimately it should just look like one. It should look really set into your skin, really blended into your skin. And so you got to spend time. No harsh lines. See that line right there? want to make sure that I buff that out. Make sure that I move the powder foundation around so that you can see that line that separates my concealer contour from the actual setting powder. Blending in my forehead. I don't think I quite have a five head. But Mary Kay Bronzer. This is something new that I've begun doing. Actually, every day on top of my liquid concealer, I got this from Jackie Anna, actually. I was watching a video of hers, and she was talking about bronzer, and I decided that I really, really like using the bronzer on top of the contour. Again, it just helps to set it, helps to get rid of the harsh lines. Remember, we want our foundation. We want all of these pieces to blend on our face like we're making a cake. Everything blends together to make one big cake. So that's what we're doing. We're, we're baking. I'm typically watching some type of YouTube beauty video while I'm doing my makeup. Mary Kay finishing spray. I like to put it on here right after I finish um, buffing out the first time just to give the makeup a, a set first. Going in with a powder um, to create a black eyeliner. I'm not even sure why I chose to do that, but it was fun to do. I did use the James Charles palette again, and that's the color Spooky to create my black eyeliner right on top 
right at my eyelash. Then I'm going in on my waterline. And guys, I am not a makeup artist. I am simply a makeup enthusiast. So I just learned the difference between the waterline and then where I'm putting the blue, which is actually the lash line. So those are actually two different spots on your eye where you can put makeup. Learned me something as I've been doing these videos. So this has truly been fun for me. Again, a makeup enthusiast. So I've learned new terminology. If I'm going to be a part of the beauty world, I would like to use the correct and appropriate terminology. So again, we're applying spooky black eyeshadow to create my eyeliner on top of my on the top part of my lid then we go under on the waterline and on the waterline we're going to add the same spooky to give a line underneath the eye and now we're going to go in again with playground and put playground under on the lash line and here's Anglola again from crayon case this is a loose highlighter I love I love absolutely love the fan brush it does not fare well in my opinion with loose highlighters I figured out how to make it work crayon case this is jambalaya with bare pencil. And I chose the orange lip because my eyeshadow is blue and orange. Dairy out, y'all. 